Before this video starts, I would like to say that this is my current take on the beta situation of the game. Hey guys, and welcome to my honest thoughts on Inazuma 11 Victory Road beta. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, we're going to get straight into this. Let's start with the first thing that I like about Victory Road, which is the overall gameplay. I really like how the game plays and fills out. With the current limitations we have in the beta, it's still a really fun game. I find more positives in the gameplay than the negatives, but I'll be deep diving into the negatives more in this video. The gameplay breathes new fresh air compared to the old games that we're used to, being vastly different to the way Strikers was on the Wii and how the stylish skins were, offering a new way to play the game. I like how the new mechanics work as well as the old mechanics that have returned to the game, although some I have slight issues with, we'll discuss those later. While the game itself isn't beginner friendly immediately, it's definitely one of those games where the more time you put in, the more fun it becomes. I just hope those who tried it for one match didn't leave immediately, especially those who accidentally fought in Azuma All-Stars with the team level disadvantage. Moving on to the next thing, the first mechanic that I enjoyed that I would like to talk about is the tension gauge and the cooldown system. I think this is a great addition. This definitely improves the goalkeepers a lot in terms of not having to switch out a goalkeeper after using all of their stamina. Removing the stamina system from the original games allows it so that you can play with the goalkeeper you enjoy without having to keep switching out for a new goalkeeper once they've run out of TP. The cooldown system also encourages using smaller moves than just using outright massive moves in the beta. For example, you wouldn't think to use God Hand in the original DS games in a very competitive match. Now there's a reason for you to preserve your tension gauge by using lesser goalkeeping moves whilst retaining your bar as much as possible. I think this will allow for more special moves to be viewed rather than the same strongest moves being repeated over and over until you can't know more. The one thing I'd change about the tension gauge is the way you earn it. You mostly earn it from playing focus battles but get most of it from when winning them. The problem with this is that it makes the midfielding part the most mandatory part of the game forcing yourself into focus battle situations. Maybe in the full game they'll make it so that castle walls securing the ball from the defending side as well as taking normal shots that don't take up tension may help towards the tension gauge. There's not much to say about the keeper gauge but I believe that this was the right change. It seems that they've looked into other football games that have come out in the time being such as the Captain Tsubasa games and understood how to make the goalkeeper stronger without them always being destroyed by the stronger moves every two seconds. The next positive mechanic that I'd like to talk about is the team building and team passes introduced in Azuma 11. Coming from a casual POV rather than a competitive stance which is how I will be playing the game, aside from ranked. The ability to customize skills and future versions will enable players to create their ideal players for specific positions. Additionally, most team passive skills introduced to the game are beneficial for the game's health, such as those that boost attack stats and aid in specific scenarios like focus, scramble and tension. However, with the team passives also comes bad skills that may hinder the game's future. And that being breaching. Now breaching itself as a mechanic I have no issues with as the original percentage is so low it may rarely happen in a game. It feels like they wanted something similar to critical hits in Pokemon but when you're able to boost a specific um, passive using team passives they can appear more often as usual. Now what that I have no clue why they allowed this. We have no clue how many they will allow in a team in the full game but this may not be healthy for the game's future. For example, I believe this will be the way to beat the level 50 alias team that will come out in the second half of the beta, where you just want to base your game off luck as they will have a 20 level advantage. If you would like more on this topic, I've made a video on it talking about it completely and showcasing a match of it being done with only a 70% team passive as well as other passives that also increase it. Now imagine the full game. Let's continue with the next negative I have which is a part of the gameplay. It's the focus mechanic, but as the defender. Now I'll be honest, I still have no idea how this works. It feels like most of the time you'll win by fluke or if the player just ran into you by accident. Also most of the times AI or certain players will immediately run when it occurs meaning you don't even have time to pull out a special technique in time. Which renders defensive abilities mostly useless on these occasions. We shall see how Hino decides to address this in the future. Let's return to the positives and talk about special tactics and I must say I really like how well they've done this in the game. Quick and straight to the point without the game pausing in time and players being in completely different positions like the original games. I love that this also helps towards the team building part as you can control when to do specific tactics without being countered. I also like how they're on cooldown as well as it's a nice little touch for potential longer games in the future. The one thing I don't like about special tactics is super tactics. Now super tactics themselves I have no issue with but some are outright annoying to deal with especially the explosion tactic which can be stacked with the team passes for breaching. The, the reason why I don't have an issue with the one that increases your save by 200% is because there is no passives that help with the saving. 
However, the fact that you can stack breaches and also have a chance of gaining a 200% bonus on top is very, very detrimental for the game. And another problem with super tactics is that you can re-earn them through focus battles. I need to know what they were thinking about this one because this is just an outright no for me. Super tactics kind of throw away the team boning part for a small duration of the game and is very heavily based on luck depending on which one you get. I mostly have an issue with the explosion one and some may have issues with others. But if they make it in the future where you can only get one super tactic per game, I'd feel okay with it. They may introduce more super tactics in the future so it's less likely to get the explosion one, which should be fine. However, it is something that really needs to be addressed. Let's return to some positives with the game being the spirit system in this game. The spirit system contributes to the team building, allowing players to customize characters further. The mechanics of automatically upgrading to a higher class when acquiring a spirit higher than the player's current one adds depth to the game, particularly for treasure hunting. This is only the tiniest bit of it, so we shall see how it works in the full game when we have access to the board. The next topic I'd like to talk about is the enjoy mode. Now as somebody who's absolutely known life the game for the first two days of it being out, I'm very grateful that I was still able to play with friends without worrying about the level differences. Yes, so far it's fixed teams, but even having that as an option was good for me to be able to play with those who had just started out playing. One addition I would like in the full game for enjoy mode is to be able to still use my current team with a set level, so that I'm still able to play with friends with my custom built teams rather than the presets for the beta. Let's talk about the online mode. I've been fortunate enough to run into only a few laggy matches. And I've had a great time overall when playing online, but I've heard the internet. I've seen how unfair this game can be, as there's no restrictions when matchmaking. And then pair that with connecting all over the world with others. Already having the team disadvantage is one, but then a laggy match is also another. Those starting out the beta may run into level 30 teams immediately in ranked, so once they've started, they'll be forced to only be playing single player mode, which is unfortunate. But it's just how it's going to be for this beta for the time being. I hope this is fixed for the full game. I hope this is fixed for the full game, considering that rank gives more XP than single player modes. Something that I've yet to talk about is the graphics for the game, because this game looks amazing. And they've went with the correct art style in my opinion. Simple yet effective, without having to worry about lesser power consoles such as the Switch and the mobile phone struggling. Seeing all the Hisatsus in all their glory is truly gold. I truly never expected this day to come, but we finally got it. Also, going back to referencing the single player mode, playing against bots in this game feels fun. It seems like the bots will always know what they're trying to accomplish regardless of the difficulty spike. And the difficulty being the levels of the bot and the reward drops you get instead is a nice touch as Inuazuma games have always had one bot difficulty in all of their games. Now that I've talked about what I like and what I don't like about the game, I want to talk about two more topics being what concerns me about the future of the game and what I think they could add to make the game more interesting which I doubt they would do but it could be a fun addition. So the first thing that concerns me is the usage of the AI in the game. And I would say that I wouldn't be surprised if this is how they got their names for the newly translated dub names. They've already spoken about the usage of AI and how they've been using it for mostly secondary parts of images, such as the crowd in the shot with Haru Endo and Rensu Shikage. I can honestly see them using this as a way to be quick with the translations, which may cause for a lot of errors in the full game. It raises the questions of where else would they be using this and how will it affect the game for the worse? The next thing that concerns me is the direction for single player content for Chronicle mode specifically. As we will be facing teams from the past to earn these players from this mode, I wonder how the difficulty spikes will badly be as I fear the results of single player being a mode where the player will just build a full team of breaching just to win all of their games and move on to the next part which may hinder many people's experience to play in the game. Given access to this will just want to force players to build their team specifically this way just to move on with the game as soon as possible. This also applies to the competitive lifespan of the game, although I would be personally playing this game on a more casual basis of doing more silly ideas rather than playing for the most optimal build. Maybe I'll make an optimal build with my favourite characters for ranked but that's about it. And speaking of the competitive lifespan of the game, this game does reward bad behaviour and stalling. There are people out there playing this game like it's foot champs, just keeping the ball in their half and not being punished for it. This is something that Hino and his team will have to look into as they don't get any penalties for wasting time. The next part that concerns me is the marketing team. They are not cooking guys, I swear to you, they are not cooking with this game. They've been showing this game to absolutely nobody in this online world. If you're like a hardcore Inazuma fan, you would know everything that's currently coming out. But as a normal public fan, I'm pretty sure I've just told all my friends about it. Like there has been no other way they would like find out about this information aside from the Nintendo tweet that was released when the beta came out. Hopefully they fixed the way they're promoting the game act because 
I understand um, Hino not promoting the game as much in 2023 as he didn't like where the game's direction was going. But now that they're more confident with their game and all the delaying parts are out of the window, they need to learn how to start promoting the game properly now, as this game has been marketed poorly for the last however many years it's been. The last thing that concerns me is the move pool of the game, specifically the Ares version versus the original version. I believe this game may have a situation where we will not be getting every move in the game due to hearing the commentary team talking about Otaku Jr. high sliding goal technique. <laughs> By the way, I hear there was once a special move that moved the goal. The referees back then must not have had their heads screwed on properly. This sounds like we won't be getting every move in the game. Going back to my Ares vs original statement, there have been many moves that have been revamped and there are animations out there for them in the arcade version of the Ares game as we've seen from Flash Dash and Royal Lancer. If they do intend to add every special technique in this game, my question will be is will they only do the Ares version or will they do both? I lean more towards both as we've already seen the original Meteor Blade and Fire Tornado whilst also having the knowledge of seeing both the Ares version and the arcade game, so we shall see. Now with the concerns out the way, what's the one thing I think the level 5 should do to make the game more interesting? Well, it's a simple thing. Making special moves have effects more than just power. Now this is something that's more of a dream idea but, and would have to make them rework in a lot of areas. But Victory Roses are trying to bruise things such as having breaching which can be seen similar to critical hits in Pokemon and the elemental factors which can also be seen as similar. So why not just give moves effects to also make each move feel more valuable, especially defensive and midfielding moves. For example, let's say Heaven's Time. Aphrodite stops time and blows his opponents away with this move. So what if then opponents were slowed down by 5% for 4 seconds that were in the radius of the move or for example Scorching Tackle which would burn players and making them a bit weaker than usual for a certain amount of seconds as well. This small thing will allow for every move to have a purpose in the game rather than just picking up the strongest move in the game whilst team building. The team building aspect is already as big as it can be with the board coming out to the full game. Special moves having effects will just be the icing on the cake. If I had to give the beta a rating considering how bare bone the game currently is, I would still give it an 8 out of 10. It's a very fun game even with all the restrictions we currently have to us the players. It's a fresh take on the Inazuma 11 series and is definitely my favourite way to play the game so far compared to other games we currently have out to the world. But that's enough of me yapping about my favourite anime series. I hope you all enjoy my thoughts on the game. Please like and subscribe and comment what you think about the game and I shall see you whenever the next video is uploaded. Peace.